Hello, my darling listeners. It's me, Fax Fivem, here with another fun reading session. I want to give you an update on some stuff. The good news is I actually got permission from the book's author that I'm recording the audiobook of to make the audiobook. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time doing that. Currently, I've read through the intro and first two chapters. Now to continue on. Currently, what I'm reading for you today is an excerpt from the book Dying of Whiteness by Dr. I believe it was Johann Metzel. Wait, why would I say I believe I... I literally have it right here. It's Jonathan M. Metzel. A very good, albeit depressing book, specifically about how the politics of quote-unquote whiteness can negatively impact white folks. Now, for anyone listening who's unaware, whiteness does not refer to actually being white yourself. Rather, whiteness along with things like, you know, blackness or Asianness or basically any racial or ethnic group with ness as a suffix refers to the generally unwritten codes of conduct that are expected of members of that group. So in the case of Dying of Whiteness, it's not a book about how merely being white is deadly or how having white skin means you have poor health, but it's rather that the unwritten rules that society says white people have to follow are having negative impacts upon the, well, overall health of white people in the USA. One of the sections of his book is about the Kansas experiment. You might recall me talking about that in the past, and um, if you are not, you can check out the video. I should be putting a link to it right here. Okay. But the brief rundown just... Yeah, you know, at the brief rundown, in the 2014 midterms, the conservative wing of the Republican Party, which, for the record, has dominated Kansas since forever, uh, finally took over the Republican Party and they enacted the so-called Kansas Experiment, a massive cut of just about every tax and public revenue you can, and it failed miserably. It failed so miserably that the governor, Sam Brownback, had to get kicked upstairs by Donald Trump to be the international ambassador for religious freedom or something like that, you know, basically a puff position. In fact, I'll never get over how I just got bored one day in college and I thought like, who is the most and least popular governor in every state or something like that? And Sam Brownback had an approval rating of like 25% or so, may as well call that guy quarterback. Particularly what I'm reading from this book is an interview that Dr. Metzel did with an anonymous Kansas parent. And, well, this will be done in an interview format, and you'll see how depressing it gets pretty fast. And of course, the obligatory, give me a like and subscribe, or whatever the kids are calling it nowadays. If I get enough subscribers, I can change my ugly URL. So please help me with that. Or don't. I'm not your boss. I'm just Fax Fibum. And now it's time to get into this bad boy. Interview. No matter what he does. Interview excerpts from September 14th, 2017, Kansas City, Anonymous Parent. We were talking about Governor Brownback a moment ago. I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on his appointment as an ambassador for religious freedom in D.C.? Honestly, it's great that we're finally getting him out of Kansas. He's just been an absolute disaster on all levels. Raided money from the highways, raided money from old people and the pensions... Worst of all, he destroyed our public schools. They used to be so great. Now all we do is worry about them. Total disaster. It's a good thing he's gone. Yeah, it looks like he's landed on his feet in the Trump administration. Maybe he'll do better there. I'm sure Trump will straighten them out. You're supportive. I'm a huge Trump supporter. Many people are, but from the perspective of Kansas, it, it, it just seems so interesting that many of the same policies that seem to have failed so miserably in Kansas now form the basis for what Trump is trying to do. You know, like huge tax cuts for wealthy people and corporations, or defunding schools and proposing block grants. These were the very policies that got Brown back into trouble, no? Who knows? Maybe you're right. You probably are. Well, come to think of it. I just know that it's it's not just me. My husband and his brother and my nephew and all of his friends are going to support Trump no matter what he does. It's not all that much about his policies or anything. They just feel like, as white men in America, their voice isn't being heard. Trump gave them their voice back. I believe this speaks for itself. 